Thank you. Please welcome to the interview area our 2020 champion, Bryson DeChambeau. Bryson, how does it feel back to feel to be back at the U.S. Open, but especially a U.S. Open here at Pinehurst? Yeah, this is my first U.S. Open at the Piner at Pinehurst, and uh, excited. I played here in 2013, 2012, with my college team SMU. Um, so Mr. Dedman was nice enough to get us out here, and uh, we played, and we had a great time, and certainly uh, wanted to play in the, the U.S. Open that that year, but didn't qualify and uh, a decade later here we are obviously a great week for you at PGA state yeah. of your game talk about it a little bit and then what are you seeing on from the course oh yeah I mean my game's in a pretty good spot um, didn't play my absolute best last week but I can tell you that I'm excited for the week and got some good mo mojo going forward and uh, looking forward to a tough test of golf out here Piners is no joke this is uh a ball striker's paradise. Uh, you, you have to hit it in the middle of the greens. And uh, this is a, a Boo Weekly quote, but the center of the green never moves. So I try to focus on that this week. We're going on the left to Ann and then to Mark. Hi, Bryson. How Hi. do you prepare for these dome-like greens? And can you talk about how this course differs from Wingfoot? Oh, wow. Well, they're completely different golf courses. I'd say that for the most part, you have to focus on your wedge game <laughs> around the greens. You're not going to hit every green. Um, your putting and wedging has to be pristine in order to compete at this major championship and at this venue. Wing foot, it was a little bit of a different strategy. So, you know, most people would say it's uh, probably not suited best for me, I would say. But um, I, I do think I'm a pretty solid chipper and putter around the greens. So, um, you know, if I get my irons in a place where I'm hitting in the middle of the greens and just playing boring golf, um, that, that's the goal for me this week, is try to play as boring a golf as possible. <laughs> Stay on the left with Mark. Uh, there's a mic right here. I know the result at Valhalla at the end wasn't what you wanted, but the way you played electrified the place and, and, and walked out of there. Can you speak to what that did to your confidence level as you come into this next major and, and you know, once you came down from the high of that week? Yeah, I mean, reality always sets in. Um, you know, I played spectacular that week. I scored impeccable. I didn't strike it as particularly well as I would have liked to, but I got fortunate in certain situations, and uh, I capitalized with my putting being uh, a huge asset to me that week. And so I'm just trying to get the Greenbrier feel that I had back when I shot 61.58 on the weekend, and I feel pretty close to that. And um, it's given me a lot of confidence. Uh, Valhalla has definitely given me a lot of confidence. Now it's just time to go execute this week and, um, you know, get some good breaks, hopefully. And if, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But I'm, I'm looking forward to a great challenge this week. And um, it's a lot of boring golf, I can tell you. It's definitely uh, different, different than Valhalla, but I'll try to do my best to um, show the crowd some, some fun drives and some hopefully long made putts. Stay here on the left. Yeah, Bryson, following up on that, you know the line about learning more from failure than you do from success. What did you learn specifically from Valhalla that you're going to be able to take forward either this week or, or in the next few weeks? Well, I learned the uh, equipment that I have is good enough to win in uh, major championships, and I feel a lot more comfortable under the gun in major championships being able to get the job done. Even though I didn't, um, I feel like I'm right there. And it's given me that confidence to say, okay, next step is to complete the task. We're going to go back right to Dan. You mentioned boring golf a few times. I yeah. know that's not really like your nature as a person. No. Is that, is that hard for you? Does it take oh, yeah. patience and does it come with age maybe? Oh yeah. It stinks hitting a six iron off the D compared to a driver, but sometimes you got to do it and you got to make the, the right decision for uh, shooting the lowest score out here. There's numerous holes like three, you know, I'd love to go for that green every single day and I may go for it. I don't know. You never know with, with me. <laughs> Certainly on the tee box, if it's downwind, I I'll give it a go probably, but you know, number three, just hitting a six iron out there or seven, just hitting an iron out there and um, playing some very strategic golf um, is certainly something you have to do uh, on this golf course to, to compete and win. Okay. Here on the left. Bryson, from, from a distance, what's the biggest part of Scotty Shuffler's game right now that's making him so good? Well, I tried asking them that a couple 
days ago when we flew in here. I saw him and I was like, dude, you're playing unbelievable. What are you doing, man? And he's like, oh, I just, I'm just playing good golf. I don't know. Um, you know, <laughs> it's one of those things. But uh, no, from, from my perspective, he's got full control of his golf swing. He's figured out a lot of his putting. And um, he plays some incredibly strategic golf from what I can tell. He doesn't go too crazy. He just hits the right shots at the right time. He's really in control of the environment. Um, not only his environment, but the conditions on the golf course. He knows what the golf ball is going to do. He knows how to react uh, accordingly. And when things go awry, he's able to right the ship pretty quickly. I mean, that's just a recipe for success. And he's been able to do it longer than anyone has for a long time. And um, it's a hat. Again, he is the gold standard right now. And we're all looking up to him going, all right, how do we get to that level? On the right, Ryan, and then Bob. Bryson, which clubs do you find yourself using most often in, uh, around the greens? And what are the sort of factors that you're weighing when you determine when to use which one? It really depends on uh, the lie that I have. So if it's into the grain or down grain, and then how much slope am I going up? Uh, I personally like hitting a 60 or 55 into the slope and bouncing it up and rolling it over the top of the hills. Um, I've always been somewhat decent at that. I struggle when I'm like hitting an eight iron or a seven iron or something like that, trying to bump and run it like that. I just don't feel, I feel like the ball gets away from me and I don't have enough spin to like control the check and roll out. So I really focus on one, if it's such a bad lie, I got to putt it, I got to putt it, right? If not, if it's a good lie, decent lie, I'll hit a 60. Uh, and then if I need lower loft to bounce it into a pretty steep slope, I'll go to 55. And that's really decisions. That's, that's the way I go about it and how I make those decisions to get it up on top of the bowl and hopefully close to the hole. Yeah. Um, Bryson, your, your comments about, you know, playing smart, does it negate some of your length advantage or do you still, do you still feel like you have that uh, yeah. even if you are laying back off the tee? Well, even if I'm laying back off the tee, I still feel like my irons are a tremendous advantage for the length and how far I hit them. For example, my eight irons going like 205 right now, uh, seven irons close to 220. So even if I do lay back and I've got a 200-yard shot and I'm still hitting an 8-iron in, it's still 200 yards, and you got to hit a good shot from 200 yards. But uh, definitely it's nice getting up there and being like, okay, it's just an 8-iron. and um, So I still think it is a bit of an advantage for me. Back left corner. Hi, Bryson. Could, could you just talk about how you tailor your preparations for a unique challenge, you know, the U.S. Open challenge, and how, how you do that, fitting it into a, a set schedule that you obviously have on, on live? Uh, meaning from the time that we have to... It, it, exactly. So, I mean, you know, in terms of you, you can't pick and choose a, a tournament that would potentially give you some kind of preparation or, or whatever. So do you sort of backfill in terms of readying yourself for the kind of shots you're going to face this week? Yeah, I think Houston is actually a pretty solid um, test for us. The Bermuda fairways and greens... Um, are somewhat similar to this week. So there was definitely some thought put in uh, to that. And we make sure over there to try and set the schedule appropriate relative to the majors as well. They're very respectful of that, which I appreciate. Um, you know, uh, I, again, it's one of those things that uh, even if it was bent grass last week, you're still going to be focused on this week and, and how I'm going to hit those shots. And how I prepare for that is coming out here early and taking care of what the conditions are out here, even though, you know, Houston was Bermuda last week. It's not the same type, and the, uh, the greens are a little different. So getting out here and getting a lot of proc practice in around the greens, on the greens, and, and making sure that my ball striking is, is good is really what I'm focused on, and that's the best way to prepare. There's no better test than to actually practice on the golf course you're practicing on uh, for the tournament uh, and whatnot. And this is a unique test. It's not like most U.S. Opens. Um, it's definitely a different style of U.S. Open, which is really cool. I love that opportunity, and I, I uh, can't wait to get started Thursday. It's Stay be on fun. the left with Mike. Bryson, obviously your putter was a key club in the Valhalla. Can you just talk about the evolution of your putting? And also, is, is your putter the oldest club in your bag right now? Oh, yeah, by a long shot. <laughs> Putter's definitely the longest uh, standing club in my bag. Um, the preparation, you know, it's funny. I didn't putt very well at Augusta. I was pretty disappointed. I worked really hard, and I actually found something the week of Valhalla with my putting. And uh, f 
from there, I've just been smooth sailing, trying to retain that same feeling that I've had, not tinkering with it too much, and doing the same thing this week. Um, last week, I putted pretty decent, made a lot of good putts in some uh, difficult conditions. And there'll be me to green, so it was good to see the grain and how it's affecting putts and whatnot, which will be somewhat of the same, similar situation out here. And so it's more the same for me. I know it's a really vanilla answer. <laughs> You're probably looking for more. <laughs> But it's more of the same what I'm doing. It's, it's, it's a function of um, straight back, straight through, make sure the face angle is square to that target line for as long as possible, and just controlling my uh, speed profile. That's, that's really all I'm focused on to make sure I'm hitting the right distance of putts. And you see me working on that every day. Everybody sees it. Um, so I'm probably one of the only people that uses a foresight on the greens um, for practice. And it really helps get my feel dialed in. More of the same for me. Yeah. On the right, Paolo, then Luke. Uh, you said earlier, maybe first glance, people wouldn't think this place fits your game. I'm curious how you feel like your game has evolved since you won the US Open to maybe fit a place like this, and what has helped you do that? Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of it's just equipment. I'm still the same person. I was a little thinner, OK, a little thinner. Um, I'm still the same person from the golf perspective. But uh, I just feel like I'm a little um, more strategic uh, more often than not. I'm not such a risk taker. I mean, I do take risks. I love, love taking risks, but there are times for it. And I've felt like as time has gone on, I've realized when that time is and when, when, it's, when, when essentially not to go for it, when it doesn't make any sense. And that's a lot of, a lot of reason. A lot of that reason is, reasoning is because of my equipment. Uh, it's changed quite dramatically, and I feel a lot more comfortable over it. I know what it can do. Um, I'm not in it for just, OK, hopefully this works. It's more of a, I know I need to hit it here. I need to go there. Um, so it's just evolved over the course of time. It's, it's not one of those things that I can say specifically one moment where it changed. But um, for me, it's, it's uh, more of an ad adaption and evolution into my own personal game and how I'm playing the game of golf, what I feel comfortable with. Um, definitely not comfortable just bombing driver everywhere out here. <laughs> you can get in some big trouble. So um, you got to take what the course provides you. Luke. Hey, Bryson. Um, you, you mentioned the course is so unique for a US Open test. How do you go about calculating your run out numbers on a week like this? It's a great question. Something that I've worked with Jibo a lot on, um, talking to him about it this week. Even just last week, I was telling him a few times because it got hot in Houston and started running out. We were just talking about run out numbers and, OK, how much is this going to run out? So we, we track on practice days how far the golf ball is rolling. We'll see on the foresight how far it lands and then how far did it actually go? And so we'll take those two numbers and say, all right, it's a 33 yard run, run out right now in these conditions. Because if it's downwind, it can go to 45 yards. If it's into the wind, it can go to five yards. So it's a bit just of like, you know, based on the conditions at hand and what slopes you land on and where it is in the fairways, you, you, you gotta just try to make sure you're hitting it into the correct areas and spots with that, those types of conditions. Um, that's really what it is. And, for example, the British Open is a great test of that. There are times where it can run out 100 yards right, in certain conditions. I like that style of golf, but um, certainly uh, there are some bad breaks you can get. But you can also get really good breaks. So it's just it's one of those things that you just got to play with what the course provides you. Just a few more front left. Yeah, Bryson, first of all, welcome back to the Sand Hills. Like you said, first time about a decade. Yeah. Second, kind of on the heels of that, the Heat main storyline this week, Friday close to 100 <laughs> yeah. so obviously eight iron going 205 could be part probably of that farther compression thing <laughs> yeah uh, but just talk about the impact that has on your game this week it definitely helps me swing faster um <laughs> heat helps me get a lot loose looser quicker which is great and then under the gun when my adrenaline goes it can go really far spin rate actually drops so when the grass gets dried out um i have to be watching out for dried out grass because that ball will go forever, especially I've got a Titleist left dash and that's not a spinny golf ball and you need a lot of spin to control golf ball around here. But um, it's what I'm comfortable with. It's what I like using for my irons. It's what flight I need for wind. And um, if it gets hotter, it's definitely going to provide a, a different challenge that we have all got to adapt to. And hopefully I can adapt better than others to give myself a good chance. But it's certainly going to make things play a lot firmer, faster. and. Um, the golf course is going to be a tough challenge. Back right, Alex. Yeah. Bryson, can you talk about what you took out of Valhalla a month ago? 
Uh, and then, yeah. B, can you talk about how your games, what parts of your game suit this golf course? So what I took out of Valhalla was, um, I would say personally, the the confidence that uh, I can I can do it again, and you know, my ultimate goal is to uh, after 20 more years, hopefully, of playing golf, God willing, like I'm uh, hopefully going to complete that career grand, grand slam. That's that's my ultimate goal for myself, and um, I was trying to get that done, the you know, at Valhalla for the second leg, and didn't happen, but. Um, just knowing that I could get the job done, uh, especially shooting 64 on Sunday, you know, I gave it all I had, you know, I let it all out there. So I feel really confident with my game um, in under pressure situations, which is great. That's what I took out of Valhalla. So that was a lot, a lot of fun. Um, and then also the fans are great. Love seeing and feeding off the fans. That was that was a lot of fun. And then this week you asked the test. Um, Part of my game, yep, part of my game. So, uh, I'd probably say the putting aspect. I feel pretty confident on these types of greens. Um, I got to work on the iron play a little bit, but other than that, it's it's really the putting and chipping is what I feel pretty confident, which is funny enough. People are going to be like, what is he even talking about? He hits it far and it works to his advantage and whatnot, but... Uh, I think personally, for me, my chipping and, and putting around the greens is what gonna is what is gonna aid me to give myself a good chance. Two more. We're gonna stay back, right, Amelia, and then James. Hi, Bryson. You mentioned that you didn't putt well at Augusta, and then figured something out at Valhalla. What was that epiphany with your putting? And then a follow-up: What makes you so confident on these particular greens? Well, um, I used to not be confident on Bermuda greens. I grew up on bent grass, a little bit of Poana. Um, but going back to your first question, what, what I figured out was just my shoulders as I was going through impact, uh, I was essentially turning my shoulders open, which is allowing me to pull putts. So I was pulling everything. And it seems so simple now, but under the gun and under pressure, your body sometimes reacts in ways that you can't fully control. And so really focusing on keeping my shoulder line square and keeping that putter face square through impact was huge. Uh, that's what helped me to my success at Valhalla. And then what makes me comfortable on these greens is uh, years of practice. <laughs> you just gotta practice and get comfortable with the grain and how it's moving it, the rollout numbers, if you're down grain into the grain, what that does. And um, it takes a while to get comfortable with that. Uh, so that's the reason why I'm pretty comfortable is because I've done it for a long time now. Uh, if I was 22, 21, it'd be a different situation. Probably first or second experience with it. But unless you grew up here, around here, around Bermuda greens, um, certainly I didn't. So it took me a while to get comfortable with that. but. That's mainly the reason, just experience. Last question, James. Bryson, you talked about your professional growth since that first US Open win, but I'm wondering, personally, do you feel like you've, you've grown in that time, like as a person? Oh, as a person, uh, you're talking about in the last how many years? Yeah, like since, since, your la since the US Open win. Oh, oh, y y my life has changed dramatically. Um, still working on a house, so that's fun. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, and uh, <laughs> sorry, my brain just went completely sideways on that. What I will say is uh, I have changed differently and in just different ways. And I still feel like I'm that same kid that came out here right out of the start. But I feel like um, my, as a person, I'm just different to interact with. And uh, ever since I got the equipment changed last year, my whole life, uh, dramatically changed. Uh, my dad passing gave me a great perspective on life. Um, uh, just everything in general has changed. You say, they say every five years somebody's life changes and it couldn't be more true. I'm a completely different person than I was um, back at Wingfoot. You know, there's the remnants. I'm still got a lot of the same cells, but I'm, I'm definitely different in the brain for sure. Bryson, really appreciate your time. Good luck this week. Thank you guys.